if you don't want to give a discount and you're buying fast expert leads, you better have a really good pitch. I don't give discounts and I serve as fast expert leads. I have a really good pitch. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. All right, let's dive in. Let's dive in. I really liked the moment of meditative silence. I think it's really good for this Tuesday. I think everyone's really like, they just need a moment to just have, be zen. It's okay. <laughs> I love it. So so good morning, guys. Here's what we got today. We've got uh, Hunter McKay, the one and only. He has a, uh, been a team leader for years, even though he looks like there's no way he could have possibly been a team leader for years. If you're listening to the podcast only version, just know um, he's a very, very mature, mature person. A night at eight, we'll be going over my skincare routine. <laughs> but today what we're really covering, we're going over leads, 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 and the difference between either curating your own leads or buying leads. And even just at a, at a really high level, and Hunter, before we, we dove in here, he was talking about, he found some, uh, so what, what did you find before we... Uh, before we started uh, diving in. Back. I, I went on a journey last year to like compile a list of what I felt was every good lead provider, either referral or purchase worthy. Um, and it's like a 19 list, a 19 strong list of, of people you can go contact. And so to me, anyone who says I don't have enough leads, it's like, no, you haven't found the leads you like to work with because of these 19, I probably only work with one or two of them now. I have touched probably 17 of the 19 on the list um, because each lead source is different. And everyone says, oh, it's bad leads. I didn't like the leads. I needed to go buy different leads. No, no, no. You need to figure out if you want to work the leads you have and how to work them because every lead is a workable lead. It's just a matter of how much time and energy you have to put into it before it turns into money and whether or not it's worth it to you or if you need to outsource it and scale it up at a really big size. And that's where a lot of these lead sources will tell you, oh, we have a great ROI. Yeah, they have a great ROI if you're Dan Beer and can spend $400,000 a month on marketing. But I'm not Dan Beer and I tried really hard to be, but I, I'm not. I'm not that cool. I'm not that sexy and I don't have enough money. So I needed to be a little bit more choosy with where I spend my money and how I cultivate my leads. I love it. All right. So, so let's just at a high level, let, walk me through when you say curating your own leads versus buying leads. What do you, what do you mean in, the, in the, those two? Like if there's two choices, what's the difference between each one of those? So when I started in the business, I was a second generation real estate broker from parents who wore buttons on their shirt that said, ask me about my poop, a giant green four inch button that said, ask me about my poop. It was because they were both real estate brokers and multi-level marketing uh, company owners for a nutrition supplement. And so my whole life, my parents walked around with this button and it stopped people to say, all right, let me talk about your poop. It would develop two conversations. They'd sell the nutrition supplement and they would get a client for the house that they were about to go sell or buy or do an open for. But it was torturous because you couldn't even go to the store for milk without having six conversations about poop and also 17 conversations about houses. Now, I invite you to this possibility because probably no one wants to wear a button that says, ask me about my poop, but you could have a t-shirt that says, ask me about real estate or, Hey, you're looking super sexy today. And on the back, it says, hope you have a fabulous day. Certain shirts will attract different attention and have people come up and walk up to you and say, Hey, how are you doing? And then you can walk up to them and say, Hey, how are you doing? Do you want to buy a house? Every time I walk through a grocery store, every human being that I talk to, the bagger, the grocery store clerk, someone just holding a can of SpaghettiOs in the aisle, I'll bump up to them and say, hey, do you own a rent? And they go, what? And they go, do you own a rent? And they go, I, I, I rent. I go, awesome. Here's my card. We should go make that uh, into you should buy like today. How about this week? Do you, do you have a job? Do you have a credit score above 650? Let's go work it out. And then I just shove them through the process because I know that their life will be made better if they buy more property. So that's curating your own leads. However, I didn't want to do that when I got into the business. I was brand new. I didn't feel like I knew anyone. I wanted to buy leads. And so I went to Zillow and I said, how much money do I need to give you until I have a company? What'd they tell you? Well, five years later, I had a $72,000 a month marketing spend and I was the top real estate broker in the state of Washington for a while. So it worked. But how many people on this call want to spend $72,000 a month on their credit card? Chase had to develop a whole special credit card like for my account 
Like they were like, we don't like giving you this much money. And I go, yeah, but can I explain it? Can I walk you through it? And they're like, okay, fine. For this specific charge, we'll approve it and let you overdraw your account by 40 grand every month because you pay it every month. And I was like, okay, thanks. And so does everyone have to spend that much with Zillow? No, but you'll find that some of the best teams do win the Zillow game or the realtor.com game by buying out all of the zip codes. And if they buy out all of the zip codes, they do that by spending 10, 20, 30, $40,000 at a time. Um, and then they just say, my zip code is my zip code and you can go away now. And I'm going to hold it until I die or run out of money. And, and you ultimately, and I don't know if this is where you want to go today, because I want to go down this list of all these different sources and what makes some, I won't say good or bad, but some better or different than others in different you know ways to work them. You ultimately ended up though going away from that large Zillow spend. I did. I'm going to drop the list in the chat just so everyone has them. You know, Perfect. this is like, you can go research them on your own. If you want to message me, I can tell you about them. Um, the ones on here that I have no experience with, uh, number 13, I've never done effective agents. Number 15, I've never done Navy Federal Credit Union leads. 16, Realty Plus. 17, Veterans United. Never done those. 18, set schedule. Bombs should be next to this one. Don't touch it. Don't go to it. Don't answer their phone calls. Don't buy their leads. Don't buy their package. Don't buy their free shit. Don't do it. Don't touch anything connected to number 18. You've been warned. That's set, set schedule. Yes. Uh, yeah, and and we'll go through some of these other ones that are here. So so you you started moving away from the the large Zillow spend. Uh, did, did you move into one of these other lead sources, or what did you move into instead? So when I got into the business, there was no such thing as a flex program anywhere in the world. There was no op city. There was no referral system. It was actually considered a respa violation for a company, not a real estate company, to receive a commission. Somehow, over the last five years, we have done magical wizardry on the back end. And Zillow and Realtor.com and a whole bunch of other companies have brokerages on their back end, somehow inside their parent corporations. I don't know how, but they get to say, hey, we'll give you a lead and we're going to take a 35% referral at closing rather than you paying for this lead. When this new system came out, Zillow was the first one that launched it. And I kind of got nervous because I had a $45,000 a month Zillow spend at that time. And it was costing me around $1,500 to $1,800 a lead. That was okay for me because every lead had a 70% close ratio inside my system. Now, that wasn't everyone. That was me. My system, if I got a Zillow lead, I had a 70% chance of closing it if I actually spoke to that person or they spoke to someone on my team. And so that was really cool. In my average price point, that was a $450,000 home. That was a good commission, trading $1,800 for that commission almost 70% of the time. It worked. Then slowly, my ratio started dropping, dropping more significantly. And my guess was that if Zillow had the opportunity to sell me a lead at $1,800, or sell Jesse a lead on a flex program at a 35% referral of a $10,000 commission, they were gonna choose that one. Now, I've never been able to prove that any of these flex programs, Zillow, Realtor.com, or otherwise, take their best leads and give them to their flex teams. All I can tell you is that I spent more and more money year after year and lost consistently to the flex teams and was never brought on. Presumably because I spent a ton of money. I do not know. I'm not sure. Um, but I know that my ROI went from being a 5X on Zillow to a 1.5X. Mm -hmm. I'm a marketer at heart. I was born into a marketing family. We sell widgets. This widget that we sell today is a house. We used to sell poop products to make people have clean bowels. Every widget gets sold the same way. There has to be an ROI for the marketing. The amount that it costs me to acquire a client has to be less than the amount that it cost me over the lifetime that I'm going to make on them. And so if I have a 5X on acquisition of a client, I spend $1, I'm going to make five. That's really good. If I spend $1, I make three. That's pretty good. I can have mistakes. I can have staffing issues. I can have downturns in economies and I'll still be profitable. One to two X, I have to be perfect. Nothing can go wrong. No one can make mistakes. Economies of scale can't go wrong. We can't have COVID. We can't have economic bloops. We can't have presidential election cycles that fuck with me. Everything has to fly like nonsense. How often does that happen? Never? Okay, cool. So I've lost money. Now I'm a one to one and a half X. Am I always losing money? Yeah, I'm always losing money. So when I woke up one morning and Zillow and Realtor.com that I was spending money on was one to one and a half X, and my rep was telling me that that was normal, expected, and that I should like it, I told them that they could eat shit. And I canceled everything.
Interesting. Okay. So I don't know if you intended to go here, but now I've got a question because as you guys can tell, Hunter's very opinionated. And I like that because this, this is a, not the opinions of anyone outside of Hunter in this nest answer this question. So here, because I know he's moved away from this completely. Can you, can you compete against the Zillow Flex teams? Do you want to, or do you go sideways and do something different? You go sideways and you do something different. In my opinion, there's no good reason to pay for Realtor.com or Zillow leads anymore because the, on Realtor.com side, there's the OpCity program. That's number one on the list. You can go and get referrals through that program. It's different by area. OpCity works pretty haphazardly in Spokane. It works fundamentally well in a place like Seattle. I think that this will hold true for other states. Larger cities, Op City will do well. Smaller cities, my guess is the traffic is simply too low in order to generate enough quality leads. And so um, if you're an agent who's willing to work, you know, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollar land deals and eighty thousand dollar mobile homes and drive two and a half hours, um, one really more power to you. You're amazing. Um, I remember doing that. I do not do that anymore, but that's what op city gives me in my area. I will occasionally get the four to $700,000 leads. And that's really exciting for me. Um, but I have to sift through a lot of bullshit. Um, it's worth it, you know, to me because I get a handful of good leads, but I have to be really choosy on, on which ones I pick. Um, I've not been in that program for a really long time. I can track my rating, but again, if realtor.com has the option of selling me leads at $1,800 a lead or taking a 35% commission, where do I think the $700,000 plus leads are going? Probably the brokers that are ranked one through 10 in the system that I'm ranked 76 out of 87, simply because of how long I've been in it, you know? And so, um, choices that I've made to be partners with Zillow in the beginning were really great because it absolutely built my business. I love Zillow. And for the people that can now afford to buy out the right zip codes, it's still the right move. There's just not very many people left that can actually buy out the zip codes effectively because you must be in the top three spots. Otherwise, you need to go and figure out how to be a flex team member. I don't have that secret sauce. I never figured it out. I was told that I might get to be a flex team member. I know that they limit it per certain area and certain geographical areas have different traffic. And so think about it nationally. Are more homes or less homes being sold this year than over the last five years? Way so less. traffic up or down. So can national companies produce more or less leads? for their flex team members that already exist. You know, it's like, we have to think about this from a company standpoint. All of these companies have shareholders, they have employees, they have responsibilities that are not to just give me leads because I want them. <laughs> well, that's a really interesting question. I'm going to go look for it, guys, and I'll, I'll get back to you on this one. Um, I don't know if I can find the next few minutes, but I'd be curious to see stats on, on lead volume. I'll ask a couple of people stats on lead volume this year, because I wonder if the, even though sales are down, my guess is lead volume has not gone down tremendously. Maybe it has, but my guess is the, the sales volume is down, but lead volume is still fairly high because there used to be like five to one. I don't know if you ever saw the stat hunter five times as many leads generated as sales. Right. This is back about right. a year and a half ago. So there's always been significantly more leads. So, so, so let, let's go down this road though of a, uh, you said there's no reason to be purchasing these. So, so when does that tr tr take you to curating your own leads? Like where does that, yes. where does it move you to? Yeah. So let's, let's just think about this like a funnel. We have a three stage funnel. Bottom of the funnel is what we've been buying. That's Zillow leads, realtor.com, things like that. Your second stage of the funnel are people that probably exist in your sphere. Maybe you bought them a year ago. Maybe you've been referred to them. They really want to buy probably in the next three to six months, and you've already had conversations with them. Then there's top of funnel. These are human beings that are probably a year out from actually buying, or maybe two years. These leads are virtually free. They also require a lot of curating. You can buy these leads on Google, Facebook, Bing, Yahoo. You can really create a netting and a back end where you're buying very cheap leads, like a dollar to $7, maybe upwards of $30 a lead, but you're buying thousands of them ahead of time. And this is where you get to compete with Zillow already because no one wants to buy thousands of leads across the entire country. You know, um, Shelly, where does Shelly live? I'm picking on her just because she looks nice and she's on my screen. <laughs> I'm in San Diego. Great. San Diego is an awesome place. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your three favorite clients that you would like to work with. Um, I love clients who know what they want. Okay. Um, if I'm looking, if I'm working with buyers, I like sellers who um, are ready to sell right now. Okay. And, uh, and um, that's it. Any yeah. price point? People who are ready to go. Any price point? Um, my price point here is about... Uh, 
1.8. Okay. And any area in San Diego or a specific part of San Diego? That I love to work in. Mm -hmm. I'm in North County, San Diego. Are there any buildings that you really like? Uh, No, I sell mostly detached single family homes. So we don't have a lot of condo big buildings around here. Cool. Awesome. So if I was working with Shelly to build her net, what I would do is I would outline the specific geographical boundaries that she wants to work in. um, And I would get really specific. Like if there's just an area that she doesn't like to work because it's too far away, or the traffic is really bad on that part of the bridge, or she just doesn't like a tree that, you know, is in her way and blocks the view. We're just going to cut that off. That way she doesn't receive any leads there. And she can create a perfect boundary in the area that she wants to work and really qualify it, if there's two bedrooms in that space, does she really want to work with the two bedroom clients or would she really like to only curate the leads that are looking for three bedroom and above? How would we know if they're ready to go right now? I'll spend more time talking to her about the type of client. What do they do for work? How much money do they have? Do they have kids? Are they retired? We get really nitpicky and specific. And then we go and find someone like Brian Short to build us our back end network. That way we can be researching and targeting just these clients because Zillow doesn't wake up in the morning. Realtor.com doesn't wake up in the morning going, how do I develop Shelly's best client? They have a team of network marketers that go, how the fuck are we going to develop our quota this month when we haven't developed our quota month after month? It's just like, they're not thinking about specific client targets. They're thinking about how do I dump the biggest ladle into this giant stock pot of soup and come out with meat and potatoes. And sometimes they come out with celery and carrots and we're pissed. And sometimes they come out with steak and we're happy. You get to choose at the grocery store what you come home with when you develop your own marketing. You just have to put a little bit more time into it. What I heard in Shelly's response was she wants now clients. That's the one thing I can't provide you and no one can. If they tell you they can provide you now clients, they're lying to you because everyone is currently operating with a top of funnel marketing and they're trying to drive them down to bottom of funnel as fast as possible. The problem is, is that after three years of COVID, how many of us are thoroughly done being sold to by the endless amounts of robocalls that have 300% increased for me personally? Anyone else tired? So we're all done with a sales funnel process. So unfortunately, you have to personalize your sales funnel incredibly. That way people stay inside it. So I stopped all of my marketing December 2021, I think. It drove everyone crazy because they thought I was nuts. I dropped a $72,000 marketing spend to zero. I went and I rebuilt my website. I made it very basic. I'm usually, I'm usually, I usually, sorry. I usually make it nice and sexy. It has many pages. It's very showy and flashy. Uh, don't do that. Make it very basic. Make your first page a way that everyone can search for homes. Everyone wants to search for homes. If you do not have an IDX integrated website, you are already missing the mark. So IDX integrated website, Someone like Brian Short from Real Estate Training Labs does not have to be him if you don't like him, but I really like him. Uh, And then Google ads, Bing ads, Yahoo ads. You also need to be servicing these leads on the long term because when you get this first lead, it's going to be 12 to 14 months before they actually want to go see homes. And your conversations are like, Hey, how are you? I see you were on my website. Uh, did you have any questions or were you just window shopping today? Oh, just window shopping. Awesome. Insert 45 minute conversation about dogs, shampooing, walks on the beach, children, where you want to go. I might be retiring. My husband, he's an engineer. Insert engineer stories. You've lost that whole time. And so you either need to be willing to have 16 of those conversations or preferably my preference, hire an inside sales agent that you pay a gobstopping amount of money in a different country to have perfect English and work 24 seven and have two of them. That way you never have a a missed day and you work them 40 hours a week. They love their life. They learn to love their clients and your clients learn to love them. The other day I was on a phone call with my assistant who was in Davao City, Philippines. It was around 2 a.m. her time. And I got off the phone and someone said, who is that? Are they coming over? And I said, no, they live in Davao City. And they said, that sounded like an American. And I said, I know that's the point. And that's the key. You need to have an American sounding ISA that doesn't cost you $25 an hour in San Diego. So, sorry, I, I, I was stuck on mute. I was sitting there smiling, Hunter. Um, we're going to do a whole nother one of these at some point, by the way, guys, diving into ISAs, talking about follow-up systems, talking about conversion. We have time to do a few minutes here. Those of you who are here live, by the way, if you have any questions for Hunter, um, 
let me know. Otherwise I have more questions I want to dive into, but um, I also want to share one thing that I learned from Glenn Sanford, Jesse, and it's really quick. It's a story that he told at, um, I think it was Dallas. It was a, no, no, it was actually um, in uh, Brent's uh, living room. We went down to Arizona. Okay. And, uh, he was basically saying, Hey, in Dallas in the eighties, the economy was on fire. And if you were looking on the news, no one left their home or no one went to work. And it was really hard to be a real estate broker because if, if you were there, like two homes were being sold in the MLS. And so he made it his mission to come home every day with a lead for his wife. And there was no such thing as internet leads in these days. And so if he was done at his day at the office and he didn't have a lead to come home to tell his wife, hey, I've met this new person who might someday want to buy a house, then he would spend the rest of his evening not going home and going out into public to put himself in front of as many humans as possible. And every human being that he saw, he would say something like, Hey, my name is Glenn. My wife isn't going to let me home tonight until I come home with a lead. Do you need to buy a house? And they would laugh. And he goes, I'm not kidding. Do you need to buy a house? And he really instilled in me that like, when you need a lead, you need a lead. Right now, we're all on the tail end of COVID where we're all saying to ourselves, we need closings. Shelly said, I need buyers ready to go right now. I need sellers ready to go right now. No, Shelly, you need clients ready to commit to you sometime in the future. And if you're only willing to work with people that are willing to go right now, then you're going to have a very starved business over the next two years. Interesting. By the way, if you're listening to the podcast, Shelly's smiling. She's, she was, she was, she was okay with that. So, but, and Shelly, I appreciate you being an amazing sport today. You're awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure you have an amazing business and you won't be starved at all. Cause I can tell that you're showing up at 8am on a Tuesday. And so you could be in San Diego heat right now on the beach, which is where I would be. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it was sunny here, I'd be doing It's that. not sunny. No, no that's cool. Hey, Jesse. No, we're, we're into what's called May gray. We won't go into that for oh. San Diego, but, but so, so, um, but I think you make a really good point Hunter, which is the shift in mindset of we were for two years, just hand over fist, people were showing up buying houses, selling houses, like they just kept showing up ready to go. And I think this is back to the, the building a, when you talk about curating your leads, this is building a pipeline mentality, right? right. This, this is where um, you reference this guy, Brian Short, this is what I want to clarify. Brian Short, he, he basically runs an ad agency for, for lack of a better description. So when you say it doesn't need to be this guy, Brian, um, but you, you could learn to do your ads yourself, or you could find an ad agency, someone to, to curate them, but you've got to start thinking in terms of how are you going to build your funnel? How are you going to build your, your pipeline? Correct? Yeah. It's, it's just really basic marketing. I think that's the thing that I even was embarrassed with myself because I used to sell radio ads. I used to be a radio and print guy. I went around and I knocked on random businesses doors and I said, Hey, you need to buy my services because I'll make you money at the end of a 30 day period. And I meant it every time. And I made that commitment and I sold it. And it didn't matter what widget they sold. I could know nothing about their product. I would learn about their identified client that they wanted. I would figure out where that client lived. And then I would go market where that client existed in public and bring more business in the door. When I got into real estate, suddenly that part of my brain was like, ooh, ick, I don't want to do that. That's yucky. And you need to go do barbecues and tell all your friends and like, you know, bother all of your best friends to go tell their best friends. And it's like some weird pyramid scheme by the end of it. No one wants to talk to you. And you're that weird guy who like is always at the grocery store saying, hey, do you want to work with me? No, go market to people. Like go turn your marketing brain back on. And then when you're okay, when you're feeling up, when you're feeling emotionally ready, go talk to humans because we're all people. We're all humans. We like social interaction. Other humans like social interaction. But after three years of really limited to no social interaction, we're all a little bit broken about it. And it's our responsibility as real estate brokers to go out and like lead the way in like how to be in public again. I love it. Shelly, I saw you on mute for a minute ago. Did you have a question for, for Hunter? No, not a question, really. I, I love you, Hunter, by the way. You're awesome. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I put everybody in, everyone goes in my database, everybody. Yes. And everyone goes in HomeBot. So yes. if I have sellers who are curious or they're just looking on my website, they go into HomeBot. So everyone should be using HomeBot. It's phenomenal. I agree. HomeBot is a fantastic tool. I'm still getting HomeBot notifications from when I bought a house that I no longer own um, from my lender from six years ago and yeah. like still makes me call him. <laughs> it's a fantastic way to keep in touch. Yeah. I love it. 
All right. Thank you, Shelly. We got, we got about five minutes left. Is there anything, I mean, we could start to dive down the, down the road of ISAs, but I think that might be a whole separate call or separate topic. Is there anything we haven't covered yet in the world of, uh, you know, creating your own leads, any mistakes you made other than, I mean, we got the mindset of you've got to be thinking long-term versus short-term right now. That's a big, that, that's one of them. And any other mistakes you made or things you, you offer? Um, I think it's knowing that not all leads are the same, like really taking the time to understand like how a lead needs to be responded to and like getting that timing is so important because like Op City is a perfect example. Seconds matter. Milliseconds matter. The amount of time it takes you to pull your phone out of your pocket and stop talking with the person because you recognize the tone that just hit your ear pod matters. Up next, you have hours. You have like four and a half hours to submit videos and shit. And so get it done tonight. Doesn't matter. But if you think that Op City is going to wait for you, they're not. And not only have they not waited for you, they downgraded you in the moment that you didn't leap through that hoop. And so if you aren't ready to be like a ninja wielding stars flying through the air like Goku from Dragon Ball Z, Op City isn't for you. Like you just got to be fast. Um, Dave Ramsey leads. Who watches Dave Ramsey? mostly Republicans, mostly Republicans in red states. And so if you're a blue state in an area like Seattle and you'd buy Dave Ramsey leads and you're pissed that you're not getting anything in Capitol Hill, you're just confused. Like you won't get anything. Everyone that you buy of a Dave Ramsey lead is gonna be in Snohomish County because that's where the Republicans live. They live in Snohomish County. They don't live in Capitol Hill. They're offended by Capitol Hill. And so just little tweaks like that. Um, fast expert, fast expert is a website that sends out marketing that says, we're going to give you a fast and cheap expert. And so they're anticipating that you're going to give them a discount because it's been marketed that way. And so if you don't want to give a discount and you're buying fast expert leads, you better have a really good pitch. I don't give discounts and I serve as fast expert leads. I have a really good pitch but I'm ready for them every single time that they come at me with where's the discount. I just decapitate them with a good pitch. You just made me think of something really interesting. And then Chris, I don't know if you had a question also, but I'd never considered this lead list that you, that you put in here. And, and you've referenced most of them out loud, by the way, those of you who are not here on zoom with us, he said the names of these companies out, out loud, but we'll put it in the show notes, th this list of sites uh, as well. So, um, I've never thought of going through the front end consumer portal for most of these to see the call to action that they're all looking at before they before the consumer submits the lead. That would actually be really helpful to know yeah. what is someone from Homelight looking at before they click the button versus what is someone from Fast Expert versus what is something from, right? Like it, that would be very interesting to know what the consumer is expecting to match that message with the call to action. And I also look farther. It's like when Facebook changed their uh, branding in like 2012 to a softer F, like literally like just the edges rounded, like it was like an 18th of an inch corner round. And me and my sister and our three designers sat in there and we went, it's friendly. This is nice. And it was because they were going through a time frame where they were being known for being unfriendly and they pivoted their entire branding. No one really noticed, but Facebook got friendlier because they got softer. And so Fast Expert has very harsh edges. Like when you go to the branding, it's very aggressive. The clients that I get from Fast Expert are typically engineers, aggressive, and will decapitate me if I do not have my shit ready to go. Um, home light is usually like, really nice, gentle, sweet people. And home light is blue. It's soft. It's warm. You know, it's inviting. It's a pillow compared to the fast expert that practically feels jagged when you get on the website. And these are weird ways to describe things, you know, and so you have to get used to describing websites and these terminologies and thinking about what kind of psychological avenue this would create for the buyer, but like really figure out what kind of clients you're getting from something. And do you want them? I love this. That 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 just totally got my brain going. Chris, we got time for one more question. Go ahead. Yeah, and I don't know. This is probably too long a question to answer in a couple of minutes, but so I've got a, a funnel for that. I picked up leads over the last probably six years uh, working in California, and a lot of them never went anywhere. I mean, there's everything from Google PPC. I had a White Lopo site for two years. Uh, you name it, as well as past clients. If you were going to try to approach and salvage something like that or reignite it, do you have any 30 second suggestions? 
Yeah. So I'd probably go through and, and it'd probably be like a manual pick and choose. Like I'd, I'd probably do a manual clean on this rather than any kind of automatic. I'd use my ISAs and I'd first give them my list of all clients that I had ever sold a home to. I'd make those the A list. Um, I would then go anyone that we've ever had communication with that's like actually engaged back in the last seven years. Um, they're a B list. Everyone else goes to a C list to engage in some capacity. Then I would run a, like just a standard marketing campaign. I would figure out like an SOI care program. That's a 12 month rotating. That's like, Hey, it's Christmas. Hey, happy birthday. Clocks forward and back. Um, a new year celebration, two annual parties. Um, maybe like a flower bouquet to your client or like cookies or like something that's like from you. Like we have crumble in our area. That's like a really soft, squishy cookie, um, that everyone really likes and is super popular. And so like, I might send those out to everyone, um, on my A-list and just like something that immediately ignites them. And then you have to call everyone on your A-list like this week, you know, or in the next two weeks, like everything that you do over the next 10 days is physically having a conversation with every single person on your A-list and saying, Hey, the market's shifted. I just wanted to check in with you. Um, in your email right now is a CMA updated on your home value. Um, I'd love to come out and see you. Do you want to get coffee this week? Um, move on to the next person. All of these calls are five to 10 minutes max. You are always about to enter a meeting when you call. Hey, Chris, I'm about to jump into a meeting. I only have a couple of minutes here. I I'm actually a couple of minutes late. I just want to check in and see how you're doing um, and just have that five minute call. Your B list, um, your ISAs can do that. They um, should have a scripted engagement for, you know, hey, we've seen you in the last five to 10 uh years, really weeks, months, you know, in, insert, you know, indicative time frame that you've spoken to them uh, and just try to pull them back into whatever system they were on. Were they selling? Were they buying? Do you need to invite them to a party? Probably you need to throw a party. And like, that's why you're contacting all of these people because everyone likes a party. No one likes to be contacted to say, do you want to buy a house? I haven't spoken to you in six years. That's like, Hey, I fucked up and I haven't been doing a good job. Uh, but will you work with me anyway? Versus, Hey, it's not COVID anymore. And I just had this great idea, which is like, I can throw a party and I wanted to invite you. Would you be willing to come? And they say, who, who the fuck are you? I don't understand why you're calling me. Oh, well, we spoke, you know, three months ago or six years ago or 27 days ago. And we were going to X, but instead I would really want to invite you bowling. You want to come bowling? And like, amazing how many humans will come bowling. Um, for your C-list, just throw shit at them and see if they wake up and then invite them to the party. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. That was a great question, Chris, and a great answer, Hunter. In like a couple of minutes, that was a rapid fire. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. Well, guys, thank you for being here on this journey as we talk about buying, you know, buying your leads versus curating them. Brian, if you got another question, I don't know if Hunter's got another minute. Yeah, you're, I just had a quick one. Um, how much it. do the ISAs cost? I, did, I missed what you said about that. Uh, so it depends. Um, my ISAs, I have two of them. They work 40 hours a week, um, Monday through Friday. And then the other ones work um, the opposite. Like I have double coverage. And so they each take two days off. Um, sorry, someone's trying to call me. And I pay $29,000 a year for their combined salaries. And so one is paid. We just gave them raises. So I'm a little bit um, shaky on this, but like one is like $7 and 50 cents an hour. The other one is like $8 and 50 cents an hour. Both of them have perfect English. Both of them work directly for me. It's amazing how many times you have to decline someone in today's age before they actually get the picture. I'm like, I'm not talking to you right now. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, um, I, I, so you can go through like virtue desk, um, uh, there was one that I went through that I can't remember the name of. There's like a handful, like anyone will sell you an ISA, but what they're doing is they're going to run an ad on onlinejobs.ph. They're going to run that ad for probably $4 and 50 cents to $5 and 50 cents. And then they're going to charge you 10 to $12 an hour. And so you feel like you're paying less than minimum wage. If you live in any of the West coast or East coast States, unless you're in the middle, you kind of feel annoyed. Um, but if you're on any of the coasts, you feel great by the experience, but you're still getting someone who's paid $4 and 15 cents an hour. That person is given a training course. They're also given a series of other things. And this is stuff that Jesse bring me back for another one. And we'll talk for in depth about about this. Um, but just, just don't go to them. Like you can really find a local person, um, really easily in any of the countries that you want to work with. You have to do a handful of choosing of, do you want someone in the Philippines? They are a perfect, uh, opposite to us on schedule, which can be psychologically disbarring uh, to someone to constantly work at night for their entire life.
life. However, Filipinos have the same culture as us. They have the same religion as us. They have the same holidays as us um, because they were a territory of the United States. And so culturally, they're the closest match to us and they work really well and they're very um, financially motivated. Um, if you wanted to you know, have someone out of like Spain, they have a closer time zone. And so they like their job more, but they're also from Spain. And so the culture of Spain is to fuck off fishing when they feel like it. And so it doesn't matter how much you pay them. You may actually pay them too much and they'll retire. And I'm not kidding. This is a legitimate thing that happens. My Filipinos will never retire on me. I could pay them a thousand dollars an hour and they would just find a way to buy their country. Um, if I paid a thousand dollars an hour to my Spanish employees, they would quit after six weeks. I, I just learned something new about, about the, uh, the motto of Spain. Um, Brian, that, that's a great question. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here just for the sake of time, guys, but, but uh, we will schedule Hunter in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll look at our calendars, Hunter, have you come on and do a whole deep dive into training your own ISAs. I think it, would that be helpful, guys? Okay, I'm seeing heads nodding. All right. Thank you for being here this morning. This was awesome, Hunter. Truly. I hope you guys got something out of this. Well, yes. What's the best way for people to connect with you if they have questions, Hunter? Um, I'll drop my cell phone in the chat. All right, cool. Very good. And you can look them up on any social platform, Hunter McKay. And I guess correction, it would be like Columbia. Spain's actually pretty expensive. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, guys. We'll Thanks see you tomorrow everybody. on H Power Huddle. Bye, guys. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.